So we ended last time here, no? Chronic inflammation. Remember that chronic inflammation is one of the fates of your um, acute inflammation or outcomes of your um, acute inflammation. So it, it could either be an uh, uh, acute inflammation could either resolve on its own Pwede siyang mag, uh, mag-localized suppurative inflammation or abscess. Pwede siyang mag-fibrosis or mag-proceed siya into chronic inflammation. So we have also already discussed the difference between acute and chronic inflammation. So chronic inflammation is inflammation of prolonged duration, usually weeks or months or depende, no? Pag sometimes years din no? kung sakaling yung offending agent or, or, or injurious stimuli is still present no okay active inflammation tissue destruction and attempts at repair are proceeding simultaneously so sa chronic inflammation they ano ba they occur uh, simultaneously so pwede may active inflammation kung nandun pa din yung, yung inciting agent at the same time there is tissue destruction and syempre uh, yung mechanism ng katawan is that uh, may attempt siya to repair the, the injury. Okay? And again, as I have said, no, it, it may follow an acute inflammation or begin insidiously and often asymptomatically. Okay? Now, with persistent infections or exposure to toxic agents such as silica or silicosis or by autoimmunity, yun, pwede siyang mag, uh, asymptomatic, mag, mag-occur siya insidiously na hindi or subclinically no subclinical yung presentation niya or ayun it can follow an acute inflammation now what are the causes of chronic inflammation first is your persistent infections pag sinabing persistent infections nandun lang siya hindi siya na na eradicate yung yung causative agent so this includes microorganisms that are difficult to eradicate such as your mycobacteria since they are intracellular no and certain viruses, fungi, and parasites, which uh, ev- evoke an immune reaction called the delayed type hypersensitivity, causing granulomatous in- inflammation or reaction. So remember that your delayed type uh, hypersensitivity is the prototype of your type 4 or cell mediated hypersensitivity. Okay. Next is your hyper- hypersensitivity diseases, in which there are excessive and inappropriate activation of the immune system. Okay. Uh, for example, your autoimmune and allergic reactions, which can be ano yan, mixed yung acute and chronic inflammation, uh, which later on will proceed or progress to fibrosis. So usually in the, on top of chronic inflammation, merong acute inflammation. All right, next is your prolonged exposure to potentially toxic agents, either exogenous or endogenous. Now for the exogenous agents, this can be so, syempre, outside, no? particulate, silica inhalation, or silicosis. While you're endogenous, we have the uh, atherosclerosis. No? So, cholesterol deposits or atherosclerotic plaque. All right. And number four, other inflammatory disorders, no? such as Alzheimer's disease, metabolic syndrome, and the associated type 2 diabetes, certain cancers in which inflammatory actions promote tumor development. So, these are the causes of your chronic inflammation. Now, what are the morphologic features of your chronic infl- inflammation? Again, we have discussed that the main, uh, the main cells uh, that play a role in, <clears throat> in chronic inflammation are your mononuclear. So, infiltration with mononuclear cells, which include your macrophage or arte-arte, macrophages, <laughs> lymphocytes, and plasma cells. Remember that plasma cells are derived from your activated B cells, no? Uh, this, uh, the plasma cells produce your, your antibodies, all right? <clears throat> and then tissue destruction is induced by the persistent offending agent or by the inflammatory cells. So it's either the, the offending uh, agent or the inflammatory cells, uh, the cytokines or the, the substances they produce no? to, to ward off the offending agent. And then attempts at healing by connective tissue replacement of damaged tissue is accomplished by angiogenesis or proliferation of small vessels of so production of or tinatawag natin neovascularization, production of new uh, small blood vessels. And in particular, also fibrosis. All right. 
So it's, here is an example of your uh, chronic inflammation. So we have here sa interstitium natin, okay, there, yung mga arrows dito, there are areas of your um, scattered inflammatory cells, more on the chronic inflammatory cells yan. So, and again, yung stroma natin is laid down with uh, fibrosis or with collagen, okay? And there is some reactive uh, endothelial cells here. Okay. Okay, the cells and mediator, mediators of chronic inflammation. So remember that the combination of leukocyte infiltration, tissue damage, and fibrosis that characterize uh, chronic inflammation is the result of local activation of several cell types and the production of mediators. So what are the cells that are responsible for uh, for the for chronic inflammation? So syempre yung majority natin as I have said earlier, you know, mononuclears, no, macrophages, monocytes, lymphocytes and, and plasma cells and others which include your eosinophils, mast cells, M neutrophils kasi remember that some chronic inflammation can be uh, <clears throat> co-infected or co coexist with uh, a, a super ano yun, superimposed uh, acute inflammation, right? Now, these are your chronic inflammatory cells. We have the, the uh, lymphocytes, okay? And the macrophages, okay? Irregular yung ano niya, irregular yung nucleus niya. So usually parang uh, tinatawag na parang horseshoe, okay? So, pag nasa blood, they are monocytes. When they are in the tissues, they, they are called macrophages. Okay? And also, uh, yung macrophages natin can assume different types because they are I mean, irregular talaga yung itsura nila, no? depending on the state of, of the inflammation. No? Kasi because um, inactivated macrophages, iba yung itsura nila. No? They can become uh, large okay? and they're their nuclear can become very irregular. And now for your lymphocytes, of course, alam yung natural lymphocytes, okay, clump chromatin, all right, ovoid to round nuclei. So this is a chronic inflammation, as you can see it here. So you have also other cells uh, involved, no? Yung mga pink na yan. So those are your eosinophils. Aside from that, there are scattered, uh, there are scattered lymphoplasma cells in the area and then itong pinkish area na to these are your uh, the fibrosis right so another view no so we have the plasma cells if you notice here these are your plasma cells eccentric nuclei the ample amounts of cytoplasm and again your lymphocytes no there is can cytoplasm uh, ovoid to round uh, nuclei all right and some of your fibroblasts itong mga iba na to Okay, and your macrophages here, all right, and here, this one, all right. So, so, say natin, no? so macrophage or macrophages, these are the dominant cells in most chronic inflammatory reactions because they secrete cytokines and growth factors that act on various cells by destroying foreign invaders and tissues and by activating other cells, most notably. Uh, T lymphocytes. Remember yung mga cytokines nila, di ba? Majority of the cytokines are produced by your macrophages and your T cells. Okay. Tissue cells derived from hematopoietic stem cells in the bone marrow and from progenitor in the embryonic uh, yolk sac and fetal liver during early development. And remember that the products of activated macrophages or macrophages eliminate injurious agents and initiate the process of repair but are also responsible much of the tissue injury in chronic inflammation, okay? And there are several functions of macrophages that are central to the development of persistence of chronic inflammation and accompanying tissue injury. This includes, okay? So, syempre, macrophages, from the term itself, macrophage, fudge, diba, to eat. So, they ingest and eliminate microbes and dead tissues, all right? And they initiate the process of tissue repair, which are involved in scar formation and fibrosis. And also, they secrete mediator, uh, mediators of inflammation such as your TNF, 
interleukin 1, team kinds and others, and also eicosanoids. And again, I remember the macrophages are, or macrophages are your, um, they are antigen presenting cell, no? Macrophages display antigens to lymphocytes and present them and respond to signals from T cells, thus setting up a feedback loop that is essential for defense against many microbes by cell mediated immune responses. So, important itong macrophages because they, they present the antigen to, to your T cells so that it could be recognized, uh, could be recognized by the body so that the the next time around, no, when, when the body is exposed to another, the same antigen, so mass, mass efficiency in cell, cell mediated immune responses natin. Kasi, uh, hindi lang siya cell mediated, but it also involves the production of antibodies, no. Kasi parang it's a, uh, ano yan, it's a multi, ano ba, kumbaga multidisciplinary, <laughs> multicellular yung, yung, yung functions nito. All right, now, uh, with regards to macrophages or macrophages, monocytes begin to emigrate into tissues early in inflammation where they transform into larger phagocytic cell known as macrophage. So remember that macrophage, uh, as I have mentioned, no? so these are the cells that migrate from the, uh, from the blood vessel to, your, uh, to the tissues because they originate from the monocytes. So it's you know, a circulating monocyte within the within the blood vessel. So they adhere to the vessel wall and then they immigrate. And then in the tissues, they become tissue macrophage, all right? And then with the action of your, of your uh, cytokines uh, by, by, uh, by activate T cell, they become activated. And then activation macrophages can cause uh, a series of uh, uh, changes, no? such as your tissue injury, yeah. Okay, toxic metabolites, proteases, nutrient chemical tactic factors, coagulation, AA metabolism, nitric oxide, and also they can promote fibrosis by secreting growth factors, fibrogen, fibrogenic cytokines, angiogenesis factors, and remod remodeling collagenases. Okay, so remember that uh, the macrophages predominate by 48 hours, 24 to 48. To eight hours while your neutrophils diba as i mentioned earlier six hours to 24 hours so recruitment division and immobilization so yun yung function ni, ni macrophages okay so mag, mag -re recruit kung sakaling kulang kulang yung cells during the clean up drive ng mga uh, ng mga debris all right so mag -re recruit ng additional monocytes they will divide and they will immobilize they will be immobilized at the site of injury where they eat up the, the debris all right and then activation results in secretion biologically active products as i have mentioned kanina all right so these are your macrophages okay all right some of these macrophages though although fibroblasts itong spindly cells no and also here we have your hemosiderin laden macrophages so meron silang pigments Okay, this can be due to ano ba? Uh, my, my old old hemorrhage nearby. Okay, so kinain nila yung, yung hemosiderin pigments. All right. Ito, fibroblast yan. And then notice the, the pinkish material. This is actually uh, fibrosis na yan. All right. So, ito yun, no? parang just a cartoon. No? Uh, a review lang bone marrow, hematopoietic stem cells. They become blood monocyte. Again, kasi monocyte phagocytic system, di ba? Blood monocyte, and then Im they immigrate from the blood vessel to the tissues to become macrophages and then gets activated uh, secondary to stimuli. No? And then resident tissues, ma tissue macrophages, so they can uh, become resident tissue macrophages such as copper cells in the liver, alveolar macrophages in the lungs, or microglia in the brain. All right? So ito yung monocytes natin. And then C, how the activated macrophage would look like. Nagiging irregular talaga siya. All right. Um, with regards to macrophage activation, there are two major pathways of uh, activation. So we have the classical macrophage activation and the alternative macrophage activation. So pag sinabi natin classical macrophage activation, ito ay induced by microbial Product. So the classic way of, of activating is 
maka makakita siya or maka maka encounter yung macrophage ng microbial products mismo for example in the toxin by T cell derived signals interfering gamma or by foreign substances which includes also your uh, crystals and particulate matter so remember that classically activated also called as M1 macrophages produce nitric oxide and reactive oxygen species and upregulate lysosomal enzymes all of which enhance their ability to kill ingested organisms and secrete cytokines that stimulate inflammation. Now, um, in contrast to your classical macrophage, yung alternative macrophage activation naman, this is induced by your cytokines other than interferon gamma. So, lahat ng cytokines except interferon gamma. Remember that. Pag classical, interferon gamma usually. Pag alternative, anything except interferon gamma. So, Example, your uh, interleukin-4, interleukin-13. Now, these macrophages or macrophages are not actively microbicidal. And the cytokine may actually inhibit classical activation pathway. Instead, the principal function of alternatively activated M2 macrophages is in tissue repair. Okay, remember that, ha? Pag classical, okay, pag classical interferon gamma affected or uh, induced by microbial products such as your endotoxin or foreign bodies. And usually, the M1, ang macrophage na tinatawag natin, they are, ano tawag dito? They function more on the killing or ingesting of the, uh, of the injurious agent or of the offending agent. So that's the classical macrophage activation. Yung alternative macrophage activation mo will yield your or will produce your M2 macrophage that are not uh, inflammatory. Rather, they respond or they function in tissue repair. So, and then you have. So here it is, no? Uh, the cartoon natin, no? Classically uh, activated macrophage, we have the N1. So, ayan, yung mga reactive oxygen species, NO, or nitric oxide and lysosomal enzymes. So, they function more on inflammatory and more on the microbicidal action. Okay. So, classically, uh, activated macrophage, okay? And they, ano yan, activated or induced by your microbes in the toxins, interferon gamma. Alright? So, kabalik tara nito sa alternatively activated macrophages. So, ang nag-induce dyan, any uh, cytokines other than interferon gamma, for example, interleukin-13, interleukin-4, alright? And then, yung M2, al alternatively activated macrophages will produce your growth factors and other cytokines uh, which function mainly in the repair and fibrosis. So, wala siyang microbicidal action. So, wala siyang inflammation. Rather, anti-inflammatory yung effects niya. Ini-inhibit pa nga niya itong classical pathway of uh, macrophage activation. So, very clear tayo dyan. Alright. So, ito na yung uh, inflammatory cells natin. So, we have the plasma cells, lymphoplasmacytes siya. Because we have some, uh, some uh, lymphocytes here and the eccentric nuclei, if we can look it the further, no, makikita natin yung cartwheel appearance ng, ng nucleus na to. So eccentrically located and ang palamats of cytoplasm. And some actually, yung plasma cells natin can, can ano yan, may mga antibodies siya, no? Na nag stain Ito, mas malalaki. Yung cytoplasm niya. These are actually Russell bodies, no? Meron siyang... Uh, antibodies sa, sa cytoplasm. Okay, next, your, your lymphocytes is also one of, the, uh, one of the main player in chronic inflammation. So microbes and other environmental antigens activate T and B lymphocytes. So often, they often present in chronic inflammation, inflammation and when they are activated, the inflammation tends to be persistent and severe Okay, remember that lymphocytes may be the uh, dominant population in chronic inflammation seen in your autoimmune disorder and hypersensitivity diseases. So, ito yung persistent talaga, no? Okay, and remember that antigen-stimulated effector and memory T and B cells used by adhesion molecules uh, and chemokines to migrate into inflammatory sites. So, meron tayong effector and memory. So, important yung memory B and memory T cells so that they... Meron tayong, meron tayong database of, of, the, of the itsura ng mga antigens that, that enter the body. 
Okay, so ito yung mga subsets ng CD4 T cells. No? We have TH1, TH2, and TH17. Pag sinabi ng TH1, they produce the cytokine interferon gamma. So ito yung galing dun sa, sa, ano, diba, sa activated T cells, so, which will further activate or stimulate your classical uh, macrophage activation or your M1. Okay? And then your TH2 cells, so this, uh, this cell secrete interleukins 4, 5, and 13, which recruit and activate eosinophils fields and are responsible for the alternative pathway of macrophage activation. So remember, yung TH2. TH1 for the classical pathway, TH2 for the alternative pathway macrophage activation. And another subset is your TH17, which secrete your uh, IL-17 and other cytokines, which induce secretion of chemokines responsible for recruiting neutrophils and monocytes into the reaction. Okay. Siyempre, yung TH2 nun is important in your uh, defense against helminthic parasites and in allergic inflammation kasi inactivate yung eosinophils. Alright. So here's the picture of our interrelation of the Inter interrelated functions of your uh, mediators or cells of the uh, chronic inflammation, right? So, T-lymphocyte can be activated, no? We have TH1, mga subsets, na, TH1 and TH17. Okay, so, which will further yield or give rise to your uh, recruitment of more leukocytes. Therefore, inflama inflammation, so, mas ma mag-propagate pang inflammation. And also other inflammatory mediators can be produced from the activated T lymphocyte. And your activated T lymphocyte will, uh, will secrete interferon gamma, which will activate your macrophage, your M1, the classical, the classical macrophage activation. Okay. And then the activated macrophage can also present antigen to T cells, so antigen presenting cell dinsa, and also secrete a different cytokine. So it's a cycle, no? Uh, interrelated talaga yung functions nila. Alright, and then activated macrophages can also uh, secrete uh, cytokines which will further lead to leukocyte recruitment and inflammation. So, kaya nga persistent siya kasi as long as the offending agent is there, it's still a, a cycle of recruitment of inflammation. So activated B lymphocytes and antibody producing plasma cells are often present at sites of chronic inflammation. So nakita na natin itsura ng plasma cells, right? In some chronic inflammatory reactions, the accumulated lymphocytes, antigen presenting cells and plasma cells cluster together to form lymphoid tissues resembling lymph nodes or also known as your tertiary lymphoid organs. Okay. Uh, there is term as uh, lymphoid organogenesis which is often seen sa so, novium patients with long-standing rheumatoid arthritis. So, nag-form na siya bali na parang uh, tertiary lymphoid organ. So, meron na talaga mga germinal centers ba? Okay. So, it has been postulated that the local in, uh, formation of lymphoid organs may perpetuate the immune reaction, but the significance of these structures is not yet established. Yun yung haka, -haka nila na pag merong... Uh, lymphoid organs, no? nagpa-perpetuate yung immune reaction. So forever, mag, uh, ano yan? Forever, forever ba yung, ano, perpetuate lang yung immune reaction as long as meron. As long as merong, ano, inciting agent, okay? So other cells, so aside from the main player natin, which are your macrophages and your lymphocytes, you also have using the fields, no? Remember, di ba? Yung using fields natin, part pa din siya, no? Abundant in immune reaction mediated by IgE and parasitic or helminthic, in, helminthic infections, no? They have granules that contain the major basic protein. So remember the MBP, ha? So present lang siya sa eosinophils, okay? A highly ionic protein that is toxic to parasites and also cause lysis of mammalian epithelial cells. So uh, aside from from its action against parasites, so yung may collateral damage is uh, against the, 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 the normal uh, epithelial cells. And also mast cells, we have, we have discussed this in the acute inflammation. No? So they express receptors that bind to FC portion of IgE antibody, which function immediate hypersensitivity reaction. Okay, so remember that the mast cell 
uh, is the main source or major uh, ano yan, uh, main source of your histamine all right preformed preformed na nga, uh, preformed substance or preformed histamine na uh, kaya pag ano immediate yung action niya kasi meron ng histamine eh, na, na na store lang sa 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 lysosome or na store na store lang sa sa vesicles or sa granules ng mast cells natin All right, mast cells are also present in chronic inflammatory reactions and because they secrete a plethora of cytokines, they may promote inflammatory reactions in different situations. But uh, mainly, yung, uh, yung setting ng mast cell degranulation is during the immediate hypersensitive reaction in which the Ig and Ig antibody will bind to, to the receptors on the on mast cell uh, cell surface. And also, neutrophils can be Uh, can be superimposed or acute inflammation can be superimposed on a chronic inflammation. So either by persistent microbes or by mediators produced by activated macrophages and T-lymphocytes in chronic inflammation. So for example, ito, in chronic bacterial infection or osteomyelitis, a neutrophilic exudates can, exudates can persist for many months. Hence, it is referred as your acute on chronic inflammation. Okay, kasi meron tayong neutrophils. Eh. So that's a, a, acute inflammation on top of chronic inflammation. Okay, so alam nyo na yung is eosinophil, okay, red granules, all right, usually bilobed, okay, ito kasi nakatagilid lang yan. Okay, chronic cellulitis, okay, chronic cellulitis, all right, so meron tayong series of Uh, inflammatory cells present. So we, we have eosinophils, we have macrophages, we have uh, lymphocytes, plasma cells, and fibrosis. Now, granulomatous inflammation. Okay, this is a form of chronic inflammation characterized by collection of activated macrophages, known as your epithelial macrophages, often with T lymphocytes, sometimes associated with central necrosis. When it is associated with uh, Caseation necrosis, the prototype of which is your TB, or tuberculous uh, infection or tuberculous etiology. Now, granular formation is a cellular attempt to contain an offending agent that is difficult to eradicate. So ito yung mechanism ng katawan natin to wall off a uh, persistent, um, persistent organism or persistent injurious agent that is difficult to eradicate. So magpo-form siya ng granuloma. So gagawin niya ng wall against the, ano, gagawa siya ng wall para maprotektahan yung surrounding tissues. Okay, remember that strong activation of T-lymphocytes can lead to macrophage activation, hence transforming the macrophage into epithelioid cells. Okay, some activated macrophages may fuse to form multinucleate giant cells or there are different types of uh, giant cells, di ba? We have the Langhans type. Langhans type giant cell, the multinucleate giant cell, uh, the the uh, the foreign body giant cell, okay, also class giant cell, right? Ito, pala, oh. So there are two types of granulomas which differ in their pathogenesis. First, we have the foreign body granuloma and the immune granuloma. Uh, foreign body granulomas are incited by inert foreign bodies. So pag sinabing inert foreign bodies, wala masyadong mag-evoke ng ng ano tawag dito ng ng a robust uh, inflammatory reaction so such as your talc sutures and other fibers so ibig sabihin in the absence of T cell mediated immune responses okay so usually uh, epithelioid cells and giant cells are opposed to the surface of the foreign body to identify that the center of the granuloma particularly viewed with polarized light in which it appears refractile. So usually mga foreign bodies na, then they appear refractile na when you move the fine uh, fine adjustment, no, makikita mo talaga na parang refractile. So parang siyang hyaline cast. Okay? Yun yung itsura ng ating foreign body such as your sutures or talc or other fibers. All right? While your immune granuloma, this is Uh, usually caused by a variety of agents that are capable of inducing a T-cell mediated immune response. So pag may T-cell mediated immune response, so mas robust yung immune, uh, mas robust yung inflammatory reaction, yung granuloma formation. Hence, it's called as immune granuloma. So uh, they produce when the inciting agent is difficult to eradicate, such as persistent 
microbe or a self-antigen in which macrophages are activated by T cells, blue cytokines, interleukin-1, and interferon gamma. All right. So granulomatous inflammation. So we have different examples of disease with granulomatous inflammation. Basahin nyo na lang ito. No? Tuberculosis is the prototype of the caseation granuloma. Meron siyang caseating uh, granulomatous inflammation and with scattered Langhans type multinucleate giant cells. Alaman natin siya na Langhans type multinucleate type giant cells because the, uh, the nucleus are arranged in a palisading. No? Nagpapalisade siya uh, sa surface. Parang ganito. Okay? Kasi yung uh, foreign body type giant cells, they occur or the, the nuclei are haphazard arrangement or in a haphazard arrangement. Okay, so this is an example of your tuberculosis granuloma or cresciating granuloma of tuberculosis. Okay, we have the necrosis, we have the chronic inflammatory cells, okay, and we have the lung hands multinucleated giant cells. So other than that, there are also granulomatous inflammation which are non-cresciating. So this includes uh, other uh, other microorganisms that are difficult to eradicate, such as your leprosy, syphilis, cat scratch disease, and also so your sar sarcoidosis, non cascating granuloma, with abundant activated macrophages or macrophages, and also your Crohn's disease. Okay, so remember that one, this is a distinctive pattern of chronic inflammation, and the predominant cell type is an activated macrophages with modified epithelial like, hence, termed as your epithelioid. Macrophage, okay. Giant cells may or may not be present. Okay, yung granuloma is parang mga mga bilog bilog ba siya na area. Pag when you look at in the microscope, no magikita mo yan. These are actually focal area of granulomatous inflammation. And while your foreign body granulomas form when foreign material is too large to be engulfed by single macroph macrophages or macrophage, all right. And immune granulomas insoluble or poorly soluble particles elicit a cell-mediated response. Remember, itong foreign body natin, walang cell-mediated response, immune response. Therefore, hindi siya robust. Yung, hindi masyadong robust yung inflammatory reaction. Okay? It's either mag-form lang siya ng uh, macrophages and fibrosis, pero wala masyadong, hindi siya not as robust yung, <clears throat> yung inflammatory reaction niya as with your immune granuloma. So this is granulomatous response to suture. So Remember, this is a lung and uh, this is a multinucleated giant cell that is a foreign body type, no? So the nucleus they appear as in haphazard arrangement, siya, In contrast with your lung and type, na kung nasa, nasa periphery, nasa rim yung, yung nucleus niyo. okay? And also notice this one, no? Itong parang refractile substance. If you move the fine cursor, uh, the, if you move the fine fine adjustment sa microscope mo, magkita mo nagre-refractile itong area na to. So these are actually suture. Now, the systemic effects of inflammation. So remember that inflammation, even if it's localized or associated with cytokine-induced uh, systemic reactions that are collectively called as your acute phase response. Remember that in acute inflammation, no, we have uh, substances that are increased. Okay, that yun, matatawag natin acute phase reactance or acute phase response. So the, the cytokines such as your TNF, interleukin-1 and interleukin-6 are important mediators of the acute phase reaction. So acute phase reactions or acute phase reactance natin can be different proteins. Now, for example, fibrinogen. Okay, ano pa? Um, uh, CRP, okay, C-reactive protein. So, pwede siya mag-increase, all right? The acute phase response because it's several clinical and pathologic changes. Okay, so here are the systemic effects of inflammation. Number one is fever. So, this is one of the most prominent manifestations of acute phase response, especially when inflammation is associated with infection kasi nai-induce yung pyrogens natin. Bacterial products such as lipopolysaccharide or exogenous pyrogens, they stimulate leukocytes to release cytokines such as interleukin-1 and TNF. TNF, these are called endogenous, IL-1 and TNF are called endogenous pyrogens that increase the enzyme cyclooxygenases and eventually convert arachidonic acid into prostaglandins. Ibig sabihin yung endogenous Pyrogens natin, interleukin-1 and TNF-1 uh, via the production of prostaglandins which cause your, uh, your fever. Aside from that, yung exogenous natin, which, which are from 
the bacterial products. Okay. Uh, now, fever may induce heat shock proteins that enhance lymphocyte response to microbial antigens. Again, this is a mechanism of the body so that maging mas efficient yung response ng katawan towards an inciting agent, particularly a bacterial or a microbial agent. Right. Next is increase in acute phase proteins or acute phase reactants. So ito yung sinabi ko kanina, no? These are proteins or plasma proteins that are synthesized by the liver uh, whose plasma concentration may increase, increase several fold as part of the response to inflammatory stimuli. So examples include, I mentioned earlier, no, C-reactive protein, fibrinogen, serum amyloid protein, and hepcidin. Next is leukocytosis. So leukocytosis is a common feature of uh, systemic effects of inflammation no? in response to bacterial infections, lalo na, all right? The leukocyte count usually climbs up to 15 to 20,000 cells, but sometimes may reach extraordinarily high, up to 40% or 40,000 to 100,000, such as in leukemoid reactions, all right? And now other manifestations of systemic effects of inflammation can result to increased pulse, increased blood pressure, decreased sweating, uh, mainly due to hemodynamic changes no? from cutaneous deep vascular beds, right? To minimize heat loss of the skin, rigors, okay, shivering, chills, search for warmth, anorexia, somnolence. So a lot of systemic effects in inflammation, all right? Secondary to hemodynamic changes. And also high blood levels of cytokines, TNF, interleukin-1, can cause various widespread clinical manifestations such as your DIC, hypotensive shock, and metabolic disturbances which include your insulin resistance and hypoglycemia, such as seen in septic shock. All right, now we go to tissue repair. Okay, so chronic inflammation, one of the, one of the outcomes, again, of your, of your acute inflammation is attempt in tissue repair. No? repair siya kung meron. Okay, so the overview of tissue repair, repair, sometimes called as healing, refers to restoration of tissue architecture, and hence the function after an injury. So this is very critical to the survival of an organ system. Okay? Kasi kailangan natin ng healing, di ba? Pag nasaktan kayo sa puso, di ba? Kailangan nyo, nyo din ng healing, di ba? Okay? Pupunta kayo ng Baguio as a friend. All right? And then repair of damaged tissues occur by two types of reactions. First is the regeneration by proliferation of residual uninjured cells and maturation of tissue stem cells. And next is the deposition of connective tissues or ito yung accessory matrix natin, collagen, to form a scar. So what do you mean with the regeneration? So regeneration is process by which tissues are able to replace the damaged components and essentially return to at least a normal state. So maintain your normal state and normal function of the tissues. So magre-regenerate tayo. So usually regeneration occurs by proliferation of cells that survive the injury and retain the capacity to proliferate. Okay, for example, in rapidly dividing epithelia of the skin and the intestines, di ba? yung mga labile tissues, di ba? Na, na discussed natin ito sa histology, different types of tissues such as your labile cells and some parenchymal organs, notably your, your liver, pwede siya mag-regenerate, right? And next year, connective tissue deposition or scar formation. A repair which occurs in the laying down of connective fibrous tissue if the injured tissues are capable, are incapable of complete restitution, or if the supporting structure of tissue are severely damaged, will result to scar formation. Remember that uh, actually scar formation is actually uh, parang fibrosis din siya, no? Most often used to describe the extensive deposition of collagen that uh, occur in other organs such as your lungs, liver, kidney, and other organs as a consequence of chronic inflammation. Or pwede din siya sa myocardium after an extensive ischemic necrosis. Siyempre, namatay na yung mga myocytes, cardiac myocytes natin. And the dead cardiac myocytes are degraded by your macrophages. And then eventually, fibroblasts uh, come into play and they deposit the collagen, deposit the connective tissues in the interstitium of the myocardial cells, of the myocardial tissue, all right? Now, if fibrosis develops 
in a tissue space occupied by an inflammatory action date, it is called organization. Okay, mag-organize na yung, uh, yung tissue scar. Okay? As in organizing pneumonia, the affecting lung. So there is such a term as uh, organizing pneumonia. Secondary fibrosis yun. Okay, so both regeneration and scar formation contribute in varying degrees to the ultimate repair. So both processes involve proliferation of various cells and close interactions between cells and the extracellular matrix or the ECM. So ito yung, ano natin, yung diagram natin. So this is a normal tissue, normal uh, epithelium and uh, the stroma. So if there is mild or superficial injury, meron lang tayong regeneration. Later, we're going to discuss the, the healing by, by, by first or second intention, right? Pag severe injury naman, masyadong malaki na, kailangan mag-repair na talaga. So ang nangyayari is that hindi siya nag-repetilialize, but rather, nagpaproduce siya ng scar formation. Okay, wound healing. Wound healing, time course. So ito yung ano natin. So uh, initially, there is acute inflammation pag nagpersist siya okay chronic inflammation and then there's granulated granulation tissue formation and remember dito pa sa the time itong broken line na to collagen accumulation and remodeling so remember that pag yung after mag wound contraction okay mag contract yung wound still there is a uh, continuous remodeling and collagen accumulation in the area so i -re remodel yan tatapyasan kung ano yung ano yung disorganized na mga cells or disorganized na mga, na mga collagen deposition, kailangan tanggalin ng uh, matrix metalloproteinases, etc. Uh, yun, i-remodel yung wound para mag, uh, as much as possible bumalik sa, sa normal function and normal architecture yung, yung injured tissue. Okay, cell and tissue regeneration, cell proliferation, proliferation signals and control mechanisms. Remember that there are several types of cells that proliferate during tissue repair. And this includes remnants of the injured tissue, okay, vascular endothelial cells, and fibroblasts. All right. So injured tissue may attempt to restore the normal structure, the vascular endothelial cells, para makapagproduce tayo ng blood supply or new vessels, no? or meron tayo new vascularization. All right. And fibroblasts, which are the source of your fibrous tissue or your collagen that, uh, that form the scar to fill the defects, all right? And then the ability of tissues to repair themselves is determined by the intrinsic proliferative capacity. Based on this criterion, the tissues of the body are divided into three groups, as we have mentioned or as we have discussed last time the uh, semester during histology now we have labile or the continuously dividing tissues the stable tissues and the permanent and the permanent tissues okay first is the labile so alam nyo alam nyo na to continuously dividing tissues so ito yung mga cells hematopoietic cells the surface epithelia wait lang the surface epithelia okay the skin, no? So, that's so particularly in the skin, oral cavity, vagina, and cervix. All right. And then these tissues can regenerate after injury as long as the pool of stem cell is preserved. So, ito ay labile, continuous dividing tissue. So, ito, di, ito din yung na-affect one in cases of um, merong uh, tawag dito, uh, chemotherapy. All right. Systemic chemotherapy. Okay, so naapektuhan din yung mga rapidly proliferating cells such as your, your cancer cells. So other than the cancer cells, itong labile tissues natin ay affected din. So such as your hair follicles, no? skin, GI, kaya medyo yung iba nagda-diarrhea. Okay, yung iba nakakalbo kasi nga rapidly proliferating yung hair follicles natin. Alright, next is your stable tissues. These are the cells of the tissues which are quiescent, nasa G0 sila, no? quiescent stage. All right, and only have minimal proliferative activity in their normal state. Okay, however, these cells are capable of dividing a response to injury or loss of tissue mass. A uh, good example here is your uh, liver, okay, which regenerates after um, 
after, for example, transplantation, after tissue loss. All right. So table, stable tissues yan. Or other than that, so they constitute also some solid tissues such as your kidney and pancreas. And the last one is your permanent tissues. So your terminally differentiated and non-proliferative postnatal life. So example dito your brain. Di ba? Hindi naman nagre-regenerate yung brain mo. All right? Or cardiac, cardiac tissue. All right? So limited yung stem cell replication differentiation nila. Okay? Permanent na. Hindi na siya. Yun na yun talaga. All right. So the mechanism of tissue regeneration Remember that in labile tissues, such as your epithelia of the intestinal tract and skin, the injured cells are rapidly replaced by proliferation of residual cells. Remember that sa isang epithelia, no, meron tayong mga reserve cells dyan, mga stem cells in between. So they are the source, of, uh, the source of stem cells which would further differentiate into the, uh, the cells they should be. Okay? For example, in skin or intestinal tract. The growth factors involved in these processes are not needed. All right. So loss of blood cells is corrected by proliferation of metabolic stem cells and bone marrow tissues driven by, by colony stimulating factors or growth factors. Right. Okay. So tissue regeneration can occur in parenchymal organs with stable cell populations, such as your liver, right? Okay. So although other organs can also uh, Predominantly solid organs such as your pancreas, adrenal steroids can have regenerative capacity. Hence, they are also termed as your stable cells. Remember that the surgical removal of a kidney elicits in the remaining kidney compensatory response that consists of both hypertrophy and hyperplasia of the proximal duct cells. Okay, compensatory, no? Kasi mag-isa na lang. So the, the kidney functions, <clears throat> the kidney works for two. Okay, hence it... Uh, Magana siya, magcompensate siya for the loss of one kidney. So the mechanisms likely involve local production of growth factors and interactions of cells with the ECM. So good example of your stable tissue liver is liver regeneration. Okay. So regeneration of liver occurs in two major mechanisms. We have the proliferation of remaining hepatocytes that is triggered by Again, cytokines and growth factors. So yun lang naman talaga, eh, cytokines and polypeptide growth factors. Okay, and the priming phase includes your interleukin-1, growth factor phase, HGF, and TGF alpha, and termination phase, TGF uh, beta, transforming growth factor. And eventually repopulation from progenitor cells, oval cells in rodents, some in canals of herring. Okay, so repair by connective tissue deposition. So ito yung scar formation natin. No? If repair cannot be accomplished by regeneration alone, so anong mangyayari? Kailangan i-replace natin yung uh, injured tissue, injured cells by connective tissue deposition by scar formation. Now, what are the steps of scar formation? First is angiogenesis, no? formation of your vessels that is driven by your uh, vascular endothelial growth factor, or v VEGF, which supply nutrients and oxygen needed to support the repair process. Siyempre, habang nire-repair natin, kailangan natin ng nutrients and oxygen. Kailangan ng formation of blood vessels. And next is your formation of granulation tissue. Again, so meron na tayong blood vessel, meron tayong supply. No? Kailangan natin ng granulation tissue. So there is migration and proliferation of fibroblasts which are the main player in the scar formation in the deposition of your loose connective tissue matrix or your ECM. Together with vessel interspersed leukocytes, they form the granulation tissue. So granulation tissue is a combination of uh, fibrosis no, and uh, interspersed chronic inflammatory cells as well as your um, blood vessels. And then uh, remodeling of connective tissue. Remember that yung granulation tissue formation, hindi lang yan siya mag-ganyan. So it remodel pa yan siya ng, ng, ng cells natin para to make it as much as possible back to normal yung in architecture and in function. So maturation and reorganizing of the connective tissue, remodeling, produce the stable fibrous scar. Okay, remember that the amount of connective tissue increases in the granulation tissue and eventually, sorting information with scars may remodel over time. 
Okay. So here is the uh, picture. No. So normally, then yan siya, di ba? So this is the the tissue. So this is the tissue. Okay. Pag merong infection or injury at the site, so tissue injury, area of injury, yan, di ba? So there is there is necrosis in the area. Okay. Eventually, pag may area of injury, merong inflammatory reaction. So acute inflammation, chronic inflammation, it is eventual, eventually eating up of the debris, no? of the necrotic debris in the area by macrophages and your eventually your lymphoid cells or lymphocytes. And then there is formation of granulation tissue in attempt to, 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 to heal or tissue healing. No? So formation of granulation tissue formation, again, ito mga nag-sprout of these are your blood vessels. No? Angiogenesis, there is angiogenesis. And then eventually, uh, pag meron na, so there is scar formation, uh, fibroblasts will enter ito mga spindle cell, no? spindly shape, spindly shape, spindle shape cells. So these are your fibroblasts. They will lay down um, the connective tissue, the collagen needed for the filling up of the, of the tissue, of the injured tissue. All right, so ito yung example natin. No? This is an example of a tissue that is uh, a scar formation no? or a chronic inflammation, right? So makikita natin itong mga, <clears throat> itong mga pula pula nito. These are actually vessels, new vascularization. This is angiogenesis. So filled up, blood vessels, yeah, no? filled up with uh, red cells. And this is the stroma, okay, within, okay, or interspersed by uh, ano tawag dito? The, the stroma or the fibrous connective tissue or the loose connective tissue is, is interspersed by your um, neovascularization, all right? And this is the, the stain, no? The muscle strychrome stain will stain your uh, collagen or the area of fibrosis. So it's bluish, bluish tinge na to. So this is actually uh, fibrous tissue na or scar tissue formation. Now, for angiogenesis, this is critical in healing at size of injury but because ito yung nagpo-provide ng nutrients natin, ng antigen. At ito din nag-deliver ng mga whatever yung mga cytokines in sa area. Alright? <clears throat> so, it is uh, critical in the sense that the development of collateral secretion at sites of ischemia and it allows tumor to increase in size beyond the constraints of the original blood supply. So, angiogenesis is not just for the granulation tissue formation, but also responsible for the growth of tumors natin, di ba? O lumalaki yung tumor kasi may feeding vessel na nagsusupply ng whatever nutrients is present or what, whatever nutrients is needed, okay? And then angiogenesis, angiogenesis involves sprouting of new vessels from existing ones and consists of the following steps, okay? First, vasodilation, again, induced by VEGF, all right? Separation of pericytes from abluminal surface and breakdown of the basal membrane to allow formation of a vessel sprout and then migration of endothelial cells toward the site of injury. Proliferation of endothelial cells just behind the leading front or tip of the migrating cells, remodeling into capillary tubes. Recruitment of periendothelial cells, pericytes from small capillaries and small muscles from larger vessels to form the mature vessel. Suppression of endothelial proliferation, migration, deposition of the basement membrane. So, in general, ito yung itsura niyan. Okay? So, this is the quiescent vessels in, in areas of granulation tissue formation where is, uh, meron tayong uh, angiogenesis or meron tayong angiogenic factors, for example, vague F. So, ito yung pericytes at ito yung endothelium. So, endothelium, simple uh, squamous lining epithelium and then outside nun, we have the pericytes around the, the vessel, right? So, ano mangyayari is that, uh, ano, by the action of uh, big F, no? So, yung pericyte by the detach, no? From the abluminal surface. So, ito yun, pericyte detachment. Okay. Mag, mag ano, madedetach yung pericyte. So, eventually, itong, itong, uh, itong endothelial na, so, magma-migrate, no? Leading tip, uh, leading tip cell. Okay. Siya yun, maglilid. So, ang mangyayari is mag-sprout siya. Yan. Pericyte recruitment. Okay. Siya yung mauuna talaga yung mag-lideran. Mag Alright. 
and then eventually parasitic recruitment yan may production pa din ng ECM kasi nga uh, growth factor vascular anterior growth factor elongation of the vascular stock until magform ng new vessel na magko-connect so yan yung uh, angiogenesis natin so sprouting of the cells sprouting of the endothelial cells Okay, so repair of connective tissue is brought about by uh, different pathways, no? the signaling pathways, cell cell interactions, ECM proteins, and tissue enzymes. So number one is the growth factors. First is the vascular endothelial growth factors, VEGS or mainly VEG, VEGFA. So just read on this, guys. But, but the main player here is VEGF. It stimulates both migration and proliferation of endothelial cells. We also have fibroblast growth factors, FGF2. Okay, proliferating endothelial cells for most migration of macrophages and fibroblasts to the damaged area. We have angiopoietins 1 and 2. These are the uh, responsible for the structural maturation of new vessels. PDGF recruits smooth muscle cells. TGF beta suppresses endothelial cell proliferation migration and enhances production of ECM proteins. We also have this uh, notch signaling, no? So through crosstalk with VEGF, the notch signaling pathway regulates the sprouting and branching in new vessels and thus ensures that the new vessels that are formed have proper spacing to effectively supply the healing tissue with blood. So nag-uusap-usap din yung mga, uh, mga sprouting vessels natin. O oh, dito ako ha, sa area, kailangan may social distancing tayo para at least yung, yung nasupplyan ko, nasupplyan ko, sa akin lang at least para maganda yung ano ba natin yung work natin na each area ay masusuplay ng blood supply proper spacing ng mga ng mga blood vessels all right now ECM proteins or the extracellular matrix proteins they participate in the process of vessel sprouting and angiogenesis largely through interactions with integrin uh, receptors in endothelial cells and by providing the scaffold for vessel growth. So remember, during sprouting, no, pag mag-meet up na yung sprouting vessels, no, uh, syempre, kailangan ng ECM proteins dyan para may scaffold ba for, for, the, for the vessel to form. All right. And again, enzymes in the ECM, notably, notably the, the matrix metalloproteinases. So they degrade the ECM. So i-remodel din nila yung area na yun. So they degrade the ECM to, to permit remodeling and extension of the vascular tube. Okay, deposition of connective tissue. So it consists of two steps, right? So migration of proliferation of fibroblasts into the site of injury, that's one. And second is deposition of ECM proteins produced by fibroblasts. All right, so remember the TGF beta, huh? transforming growth factor B. This is the most important cytokine for synthesis and deposition of connective tissue proteins. This uh, growth factor stimulates <clears throat> fibroblast migration and proliferation. So ito naman, mga fibroblast ang, ang pinapamigrate or pinapapunta sa area of injury so that they may proliferate and enhance or increase yung synthesis ng collagen and fibronectin sa area. All right? Okay, so remodeling of connective tissue. Again, so so yung contraction ng uh, contraction ng wound, for example, so uh, in the long run, no, mayroon pa din tayong remodeling ng scar or ng connective tissue. Okay? So mayroon kasing balance yan, no, between the synthesis and degradation. So more like the, the bone, no? bone resorption and, and osteoclastic activity, uh, bone formation and bone resorption, no? parang balance between that. Uh, same with your bone, no? yung connective tissue natin or remodeling connective tissue, there must be a balance between the synthesis and the degradation of extracellular matrix proteins. After its deposition, the connective tissue in the scar continues to be modified and remodeled. Again, para maging um, as much as possible ba, mag back to normal as much as possible with regards to architecture and also with the function. So the degradation of collagens and other ECM components is accomplished by the MMPs or the matrix metalloproteinases. So they, they, they destroy nila or even remodel nila by, by yun, pang tatapyasin nila itong matrix na to kasi parang para nakakaabala or nakakasagabal ba siya, for example. 
And remember that uh, MMPs include a variety of enzymes, no? Okay. So we have interstitial collagenases, which cleave fibrillar collagen, MMP1, 2, and 3. We have gelatinases, yeah, stromylysines, all right. Okay, MMPs are produced by a variety of cell types. So not just the, the fibroblasts, but also macrophages, neutrophils, synovial cells, and some epithelial cells. All right. Again, they are activated to remodel the repo, uh, deposited ECM and then shut down by the TIMPS. Okay, so ito yung inhibitory naman of your uh, MMPs. All, all right, so atoms are anchored to the plasma membrane cleave release extracellular domains of cell-associated cytokine growth factors such as TNF, TGF, beta, and members of the EGF family. So remember, uh, MMPs and TIMPs, okay? So TIMPs is an inhibitory of your MMPs. Inhibitory yun, okay? And then uh, remember that there are several factors that influence tissue repair, okay? They can be altered according to uh, the quality or adequacy of the reparative process. So uh, there are, these are the variables that modify the healing process. This can be extrinsic no, or intrinsic, okay? Or systemic or local. So first is your infection. So pag meron tayong infection or superimposed infection, of course, prolonged yung inflammation and therefore prolonged din yung local tissue, tissue, tissue injury or not just prolonged but uh, rather increased din ang ang injured area, okay? So, therefore, mas prolong yung tissue healing process, all right? In cases of diabetes, there is compromised tissue repair for many reasons, secondary ab abnormal wound healing, okay? Uh, nutritional status, pag wala, tayong, pag wala tayong materials for the production of collagen, wala din. For example, yung protein deficiency and vitamin C deficiency, inhibit collagen synthesis and therefore retards healing so mas prolo, uh, mas ano yung healing natin hindi siya uh, matagal oh, mabagal yung healing process and then your glucocorticoids or your steroids so uh, results in weakness of the scar due to inhibition of TGF beta okay which diminish uh, fibrosis all right so other than that, we also have mechanical factors such as local pressure or torsion may cause wounds to, to pull apart or dehis. So remember, kaya nga yung sinasabi ko nga na pag merong injury, as much as possible, i-immobilize siya, So that it would permit a healing process. Ngayon, kung merong mechanical factors, local pressure, laging nadadaganan or laging nababangga, so mas prolonged yung healing process. No? Next is poor perfusion of course kailangan natin ng uh, kailangan ng new vessels to supply during the repair no? kailangan ng di ba pag nagpatayo ng bahay kailangan ng tubig para may pang-mix ka ng semento so so much the same with your ano with your uh, chronic inflammation with your tissue repair kailangan pa din natin ng perfusion so ngayon if there is poor perfusion secondary to atherosclerosis diabetes obstructed business drainage as in varicose vein, it will impair healing. So hindi sobrang tagal yung healing or impaired talaga yung healing natin. And again, yung foreign bodies natin such as fragments of steel, glass, or even bone impede healing. So kaya yung may mga, may mga bone fragments ba or siguro mga shrapnel, for example, hindi talaga yung mag heal completely unless hindi natanggal yung, yung offending agent or your foreign body na yan. Now, uh, the type and extent of tissue injury affects the subsequent repair. So, depende kung extensive yung tissue injury, depende sa, sa depth, for example, second intention, so sobrang ano na, loss of enough tissue talaga, eh de, mas longer yung, yung healing process kasi it needs to be, uh, kailangan mag-deposit, kailangan mag-deposit ng ECM dun sa excavated area. All right? And then also the location of the injury and the character of the tissue to which the injury occurs. I can also play a role no? with regards to the length or the quality of tissue repair. Okay, now, um, uh, healing of skin wounds. Okay, for example, ito, no? parang hacking wound yan. No? Clean yung wound na yan. This is a process that involves both epithelial regeneration and formation of 
connective tissue scar. So remember that based on the nature of the size of the wound, the healing of the skin wound is said to occur by either first intention or second intention. So what do we mean by the word or by the term healing by first intention? Uh, healing by first intention occurs when the injury involves only the epithelial layer, okay? such as in this picture. No? Epithelial layer, the principal mechanism of repair is epithelial regeneration, also called primary union or healing by first intention. Although in this picture, no, sabi, epithelial layer, so it must be the, 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 the outermost layer lang, di ba? Ito kasi kasama yung, uh, yung dermis na eh. Pero anyway, ganun. Basta more on the superficial layer lang siya. Tapos, malinis yung wound. So an example of healing by first intention is the healing secondary surgical incision. Surgical incis incision, di ba? Malinis yung, ano, malinis yung wound. Isang linear incision, all right? It causes only focal disruption the epithelial basement mem membrane and the continuity and death of relatively few epithelial cells and connective tissue. So very little lang yung death of the epithelial cells okay, involved. So uh, basically healing by first intention pag superficial lang yung involved. All right? And then the repair process consists of, of course, Sa area of inflammation, meron pa din tayong inflammatory process, composed of your neutrophils and your clot. Okay? And then proliferation of epithelial cells and other, and other cells. And then eventually, maturation of the connective tissue scar. And then itong gap na to is again uh, united or meron tayong primary union. So in, cross, in contrast to your healing by first intention, healing by second intention occurs when the cell or tissue loss is more extensive, such as in large wounds or abscess, ulcerates and ischemic necrosis or infarction in particular organs. So yung repair process na yun is healing by second intention, mas extensive yung area of, of, of damage, so, such as in this case, no? o yun, o, ulceration, di ba? sobrang extensive. So like this one, all right? So healing by second intention, all right? Inflammatory reaction is more intense in the bone and granulation tissue. And there's accumulation of ECM formation of large scar and wound contraction by the action of myofibroblasts. So larger than scar, all right? Uh, ganon. Larger yung scar kasi intense yung uh, inflammatory reaction. So healing by second intention, Extensive large wounds. So this is an example of your granulation tissue. Again, a combination of your lymphoplasma sites and your neovascular, uh, neovascularization, these blood vessels, no, mga sprouting vessels. Yan. And uh, siguro somewhere in this area, there's also fibrosis. All right. So another area, no? so again, yung neovascularization mo, and we have your lymphoplasma sites. Okay, plasma cell, lymphocytes. Okay, so ito yung ano natin, no? So, this is an example of your ulcer, right? So, ito yung ulcer na to. Nag-incision uh, biopsy tayo dyan. Pak, kinat ito. Now, ito yung itsura natin. Ito yung excavation na ito. Ito yung area of ulceration. So, remember, ito yung epithelium natin. Wala na siya, no? But rather, meron na tayong uh, clot formation. Ay, Oo, meron tayong fibrotic or ito yung areas of ulceration. Meron a mixture of fibrin, fibrin and fibrosis and also acute inflammation sa area na yan. Eventually, uh, meron tayong granulation tissue formation okay, dito sa area na to, no And then, uh, ultimately, magpapaglis siya o mag -re uh, may There is re epithelialization and hence formation of, of scar. All right, formation of the scar. So, meron na tayong uh, organization of the of the scar tissue. All right. Now, with regards to wound strength, no carefully sutured wounds have approximately seven percent of the strength of the normal skin, largely because of the placement of sutures. So, hindi talaga siya one hundred percent, no. All right. When sutures are removed, usually at one week, wound strength is approximately ten percent of that the and wounded skin but this increases rapidly over the next four weeks eventually the wound strength reaches approximately 70 to 80 percent normal by three months 
but usually does not substantially improve beyond that point. So again, up to this level, ano, 70 to 80% lang ang wound strength natin after 3 months or by, by the third month. Hindi na siya mag-go beyond ng 100% kasi may defect eh. Okay, now with regards to fibrosis in parenchymal organs, fibrosis is used to denote excessive deposition of collagen and ECM components in a tissue or in an organ. Okay, so the basic mechanism of fibrosis is the same as your scar formation and skin during tissue repair. So meron pa din tayong mga cytokines involved, which the major cytokine is your TGF beta. So, fibrotic disorders include the diverse chronic debilitating diseases such as your, ito, liver cirrhosis, systemic sclerosis or scleroderma, fibrosing disease of the lungs, pneumoconiosis, etc. All right? So, an example of healing by fibrosis, your uh, good example is your myocardial infarction. So, these are the the cardiac myocytes, no? ito, hindi, ito ang hindi talaga sa area ng um, necrosis talaga or myocardial infarction. This is at the edge of glory. <laughs> this is at the edge of the acute infarct. However, you could notice also that uh, ito yung individual cells or individual cardiac myocytes. Notice the pink uh, in between, no? the interstitium. Actually, these are your areas of fibrosis na yan. Right? Yan. And then ito yung sa in fact natin so remote ibig sabihin ng remote matagal na previous uh, previous infarction so makikita natin ito yung mga ito yung cardiac myocytes natin and notice also this area here is your scar tissue or your fibrosis these are your fibroblasts okay so imaginein mo di ba so syempre wala nang contractile activity yan wala na siyang contactile functions kasi it's a cardiac myocyte that functions in contactility, alright? So ito, wala ng function. So that's why pag meron kang previous myocardial infarction, somehow there is degree of, uh, may degree of uh, dysfunctionality or hindi ka na functional or non-functional na to some degree. So hindi na efficient yung heart mag-pump. So in the event, pwede kang mag-lead into uh, heart failure eventually, no? Kasi nga, um, kulang sa pump yung heart mo kasi nga wala na siyang contractile cells such as your cardiac myocytes. Alright, so ito yung again yung trichrome stain natin. So notice yung bluish or yung teal color will stain your collagen. So ito yun. Okay, Masson's trichrome stain. Alright, and itong, gray, ay, itong red na to, these are your cardiac myocytes. So notice, no? So, matatanggal talaga siya ng contractility or somehow uh, mayroong degree of uh, non-functionality in the part of the tissue with uh, scar formation. Now, we go to abnormalities in tissue repair. Okay, we have, uh, it's either inadequate formation, granulation, tissue formation, or formation of the scar that extensive. Okay, so first is wound dehiscence. Ano ibig sabihin ng dehiscence? Dehiscence or rupture of a wound occurs most frequently after abdominal surgery that is due to increased intra-abdominal pressure. So natanggal. Hindi siya maganda yung, uh, yung granulation formation niya. Okay? Kasi nadi-disrupt eh. Just to um, increase abdominal pressure. Alright? Uh, now there is, this is brought about, for example, yung increased uh, abdominal pressure can be due to yun, vomiting, nag-cough, nag, nag use, okay, can generate mechanical stress. That would, okay, that would, uh, would cause wound dehiscence. Okay, next is ulceration. Now, wounds can ulcerate because of inadequate vascularization during healing. So, remember, very important yung, um, yung ano natin yung angiogenesis not just the just not just formation of angiogenesis but also several factors then including your notch signaling di ba para para equal or uh, evenly spaced yung somehow yung yung angiogenesis para ma masupplyan yung lahat ng mga area ng ng injury all right okay so in, just in this case for example lower extremity wounds individuals with atherosclerotic peripheral Vascular disease, since wala nang blood supply, merong problema sa 
sa peripheral vasculature. Okay, so magkakaroon ng ulceration. Okay, non-healing wound also form in areas devoid of sensation. So, for example, sa mga diabetic patients, diabetic peripheral neuropathy. Alright, pwede siyang magkaroon ng, uh, kasi hindi mo na-feel eh, na ay may wound na pala ako. So, non-healing wound. Kasi every time nababangga-bangga siya or nasusugatan ka, hindi mo alam. Okay. Next is your excessive formation of components of the repair process can give rise to the two types. We have the hypertrophic scars and the keloid scars. So magkaiba sila. The accumulation of excessive amounts of collagen may give rise to raised scar known as your hypertrophic scar. So excessive amounts of collagen. This one is your hypertrophic scar. So ang pinagkaiba lang dito sa hypertrophic scar is within the confines of the of the wound siya, no? Generally developed after thermal or traumatic injury that involves deep layers of the dermis. So accumulation of excessive pero within the confines of the wound. Right? Pero if the scar tissue grows beyond the boundaries of the original wound such as this one na hindi nagre-regress talaga, this is the keloid. Okay? Keloid scar. So more common in African Americans. So pag chinect mo yan, sub, uh, super hypertrophic yung hypertrophic yung yung scars na yan i mean extensive yung um extensive yung granulation tissue formation extensive yung yung hyalination yung, yung fibrosis natin okay now we also have exuberant granulation so anong ibig sabihin niyan excessive amounts of granulation tissue which, which protrudes above the level of the surrounding skin and blocks repetitization the process has been called as Ano yan? Proud flesh. Right? So therefore, itong exuberant granulation tissue formation na yan, it must be removed either by surgical excision to permit restoration of the continuity of the epithelium. Also, um, para ma-restore yung, kasi may impinge yung mga surrounding structures niyan. Again, di ba? Pag, pag ma-impinge, may poor my poor perfusion okay my pressure local pressure to to nearby uh, to nearby organs nearby tissues can cause cell, cell injury all right and then for fortunately rarely incisional scars automatic injury may be followed by exuberant proliferation so ang ang example natin dito is your desmoids or aggressive fibromatosis okay these neoplasms lie in the interface between benign and malignant tumors so exuberant granulation tissue formation yan. All right, so such as this one, no? extensive, okay, extensive yung granulation tissue formation. Next is your contraction. So contraction in the size of a wound is an important part of the normal healing process. Remember the, the, the graph I have, see, I have shown you, no? Acute inflammation, there is my macrophages. Next is macrophages and uh, mononuclear. And then eventually, yung wound, uh, wound contraction, part yan ng ano, kasi it's part of the remodeling. Doon mag-start yung remodeling ng, ng wound natin. However, when there is exaggeration of the contraction, uh, it is termed as contracture. So it results in deformities of the wound and in surrounding tissues such as this one. No? So particularly, uh, nagde-develop yung contractures sa palms, sa soles, and that's your aspect of the thorax. In cases are commonly seen in ano talaga, serious burn and can compromise movement of joints. So ito yun, right? So contracture. Kaya immediate dapat talaga tapos naka, uh, ano tawag dito, naka, naka physical therapy talaga yung, yung patient natin in cases of serious, serious burns. Kasi yun yung uh, one of the, ano talaga, one of the uh, complications talaga of serious burns is the contractured contractures which can grab which can debilitate the patients no and compromise the movement talaga niya okay so that ends our lecture so good luck on your exam